Hello guys, my name is Anna and I'm from Ukraine and I vlog daily since the start of Russian invasion to my beautiful and independent country Ukraine. And I hope that on my channel you are able to discover beautiful things about Ukraine, its culture, history and its dramatic present and I also believe we will witness Ukrainian victory together. So if you're new to the channel, join our friendly community because the world needs to know more about Ukraine and there are many interesting and valuable things that I'm ready to share with you. And one of my important observations is that our life is totally unpredictable. A year and a half ago, I would never imagine myself having a vlog and especially a vlog named War in Ukraine. I am totally anti-war person. I'm a kind of a person that hated wearing military t-shirts. It was not my thing. I uh, understand there are lots of good films and books about the Second World War, for example, but they were never my favorite because I don't like war and everything that it brings with it. Also, maybe because I live on this uh, territory close to an extremely aggressive and miserable neighbor, Russia, that I have this war anxiety. Maybe it was something in the air that I felt is possible. So, together with war in your life, uh, many unbelievable things come. And many unbelievable topics appear in your conversations. And my today's one is totally something I uh, would never imagine talking about. But I'm going to talk about 200,000 dead Russian soldiers who died in Ukraine since the start of this stupid Russian invasion. But before that, I would like to remind you that Ukraine was and is a peaceful country. We were sleeping in the morning on the 24th of February 2022, building our country, having our problems, but living this normal, typical European life. Not crossing borders, not building secret laboratories, and despite my personal desire, not even being a member of NATO. And Russia brutally attacked us, believing that she, it, can take over Ukraine really quickly. But it failed. Why? Because Ukrainians are strong, Ukrainians love freedom, and we will never give up. And uh, many and many Russians started to die. Honestly, I am a person that is against death sentence, for example, against any kind of murder. But in Ukraine, we protect our people, we protect our territory. So for me, any person who is a Russian soldier and crossed our border deserves death. And I say it with all responsibility and understanding. Many priests, many people who are into religion, say that this is a different kind of uh, killing because you don't kill for fun, for money or anything. These are criminals, these are murderers who came to destroy you and you have to protect yourself. In case of Ukraine, all these 200,000 Russian soldiers that were killed here were killed because they came to invade the territory, to kill the people, to destroy the culture. We were protecting ourselves and I hope we will continue protecting ourselves successfully. Of course, together with war, you often get a punch of uh, black humor and a very popular expression in Ukraine that the only good Russian is the dead Russian. I understand there are some good Russians who stand for Ukraine, who want changes, but let's agree there are not many of them and I'm not talking about them in my today's video. I'm talking about violent Russian soldiers who looted, raped, bombed, killed innocent Ukrainians on the Ukrainian territory just because their supreme org Kremlin gobbling Putin told so. So at the very beginning of this war, we, uh, or just before it, we were reading about huge Russian army that gathered on the borders of Ukraine and the number of this army ready to attack Ukraine was 200,000 people. Exactly 200,000 people are dead now because of Putin's idea to invade Ukraine. So uh, once again, a joke that Russian territories on Ukraine are only two meters below the ground, turn out to be true. Russians treat their soldiers in a very bad way. 
Many of the wounded die because they do not receive the necessary medical help. They know they have 140 million people and they are ready to sacrifice as many as they need. Uh, human life, human dignity, uh, right to be different uh, was never respected in Russia. And the majority of wars that they won, they won only by the number of uh, victims they were ready to sacrifice. And that is sad because that's not the kind of victory a normal country would wish for itself. At the very beginning of this war, they did not take the corpses of their soldiers and they were lying on the battlefields for months. There were lots of black jokes, once again, about uh, fertilization of Ukrainian lands and how good our sunflowers are going to be. But honestly, I would not like to eat a tomato with the remains of a Russian soldier and it all makes me feel very, very disgust. But uh, this disgust goes beyond the fact of this corpses that were uh, lying on the battlefields, but also on this Russian culture that allows such disrespect to the remains of the soldiers whom they try to portray as heroes and protectors of uh, the Ruskimir. Uh, now uh, they got used to the losses and uh, Russian population sees that this war did not went the way they want. So uh, hopefully they um, are taking many of the dead Russians back to their dead Russia. Uh, things that prove the, this fact that Russia has huge losses in this war, um, despite the numbers that uh, Putin voices in his speeches, but we all know that uh, what is the way to see a Russian lying when his lips are moving. So Putin is like the best in lying. And uh, they um, show small numbers, but uh, the realities of Russia demonstrate just the different. First of all, mobilization that continues. And uh, at the beginning, Putin did not intend to start any mobilization because typically people do not always like mobilization processes. There is a danger of protest. There is a danger of dissatisfaction. And we see that some of these moods are rising in Russia. So he was forced to mobilize people because he lacks people. Also, he started developing and multiplying the number of private armies like Wagner Group and inviting them to fight in Ukraine. This is another signal that he does not have enough people. And prisoners. There are many prisoners in a Russian army and in private armies who are taken from prisons while serving and uh, they are sent to Ukraine and um, they fight here, they die here, and nobody knows what are they and where they are, whether they are alive, so nobody cares about them. And that's, once again, a very Russian approach to disrespect human life and human dignity. A bad thing is that Ukraine also has its losses, and uh, they are big. We don't know the exact numbers, and of course they are much smaller than Russian losses, but these are losses of a different quality. And what I mean by that, these are people who protect the motherland. These are people who did not choose to fight or kill. They were made so by brutal Russian invasion. And uh, they did not have other choice and they sacrificed their lives for a sacred purpose, to protect their motherland, to protect their children, to protect their parents. So, uh, of course, uh, that is why we want this war to, so to end as soon as possible, because every day results in huge losses for Russia, which is good, but also in losses of good people in Ukraine. And that's why we need your support, we need your weapons to stop their missiles and other uh, ways to uh, finish this war sooner, but of course not negotiating at any price. <clears throat> also, uh, Putin wanted to demilitarize and denationalize, denazify Ukraine, but he does this successfully to his own country and to his own uh, army. Within this year and three months, he managed to destroy perhaps the best of uh, Russian military. Many of his generals and professional soldiers already died. 
and we see that there's battalions and new groups who arrive to Ukraine. These are prisoners, these are uh, just angry people, and they are not so professional. And as a result, I think that uh, Russian army is becoming weaker and weaker. We all saw that this image they created at the beginning of the second strongest army in the world, turning out to be the second strongest army in Ukraine, uh, is a myth. But now I think that their state is much worse than it was at the beginning. And uh, this is once again a good thing. So we have to continue supporting each other and becoming stronger and stronger so that we will be able to stop Russia. I am honestly not that optimistic in general because I believe nothing good can happen to Russia in future. And the task of Ukraine will be to train, to be very much militarized, not something that I personally like. Uh, but we will always have Russia at the borders and we have to protect ourselves and the rest of the world from these gloomy ideas that often come to Russian minds. But today we mark this 200,000 dead Russian soldiers. Of course, the numbers are always approximate, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. But this is close to... Uh, the starting army to the army that gathered on the borders of Ukraine before the 24th of February 2022. So we managed to stop them and to stop them in this very persuasive way. Once again, I remind you that Ukrainians are peaceful people. And as soon as we clean our territory from invaders, we want to return back to building, to traveling, to uh, teaching, to doing normal things. We are not killers and criminals as the Russians are. I don't know what must be in the head of a Russian soldier if he is more or less normal. When he crosses the border of Ukraine, he sees how people hate him, how people ask him to leave, uh, how people want to continue their ordinary lives without these brutal invaders, and they continue making the orders. One of my subscribers once said that there are so many problems in Russia, so many uh, corrupt politicians that he is surprised why all of these soldiers, all of these armies in Ukraine do not turn back and move on Kremlin to stop Kremlin criminal regime. But I don't know, Russians uh, are not known for such actions and I don't feel they can stop Putin or uh, similar ideas inside their country. So this has to be done from outside and we are doing our best. Thank you so much for being with me. Thank you for standing with Ukraine. Thank you for buying me coffees. Now I drink more warm teas. Uh, thank you for becoming my patrons. Check our merch in our shop and all the links also to my social media you can find below this video. Slava Ukraini!